Clear Lake is a large lake in Northern California. It's about 19 miles long and about eight miles across. The lake is relatively shallow with a maximum depth of about 60 feet. It's a beautiful lake surrounded by many scenic hills. The lake is very popular for recreational boating. The name of the lake is a misnomer. It's not very clear, especially during the summer months when you have large mats of cyanobacteria and algae forming at the surface. Because the lake is relatively shallow, it's highly eutrophic, which means it has high concentrations of nutrients, which are needed by the phytoplankton and zooplankton, which feed the fish, which feed the birds. When Redbud Audubon Chapter was first formed in 1974, the founding members chose as the logo for this chapter, the Western Grebe. Why? Because it is probably the favorite bird of people who live in Lake County and come to visit our beautiful Clear Lake. I come out here with students each year from uh, Pacific Union College. This is my third summer out here. I'm Nicholas Drakenberg, and I am an environmental studies major at Pacific Union College. My name is Daniel Stoffelmore, and I'm also an environmental studies major at Pacific Union College. Volunteers from the Red Bud Audubon Society often help out with the monitoring. There are two large species of grebes that nest out here. The western grebe comprises about 85% of the breeding population. It has a black crown that extends below the eye and a yellow-green bill. This is a Clark Screed. You can tell by the extensive white on the face extending above the eye and the bright orange-yellow bill. They often hybridize with each other. In fact, about one-third of the Clark Screeds choose a Western Grebe as a mate. This is a male Western Grebe with a female Clark Screed. They have a single leg on the nest. This is a possible hybrid sitting on the nest with a bright orange bill. Western and Clark Screeds nest in large colonies. Um, sometimes you'll have is, uh, just an isolated nest out in the middle of nowhere, but normally they like to be in, uh, in, in clusters. Uh, this particular colony here has about 1,100 nests. Some Greaves are seemingly antisocial. This nest is about half a kilometer from the nearest colony. The Greaves have some very spectacular courtship displays. The most spectacular is probably the rush display in which you get two Greaves, sometimes three or four, and they uh, run across the water for a long distance, side by side. There's also a weed ceremony in which you have two birds that, that are, are presenting weeds to each other and they're kind of like swimming in circles in an upright position. Here's a pair of western grebes just beginning to build a nest. There are two different designs of nests. Uh, there are those built along the shoreline in the tulies, like this one. Open water nests are simply floating on the surface and they're attached to submergent vegetation, especially sago pondweed. Some nests are located a long ways from shore. This particular nest is about 950 meters, nearly a kilometer from shore. There's a little territorial dispute. We've seen Clark's grebe sitting on this nest and Western grebe sitting on it. Western grebe is stealing nest material from another grebe. After mating, the male tenderly stomps on the female's head and belly flops into the water. That female Clark Scree just laid that egg just a few minutes ago. She'd been sitting there for a while. We normally lay about three to four eggs in a nest. Okay, here's a nest with eight eggs. Eight eggs is laid by two different female birds. Uh, this nest had eight eggs last week. Four of them are brownish, four are blue. The bluer ones are more recent. The brown eggs have been there for a while. They turn, they become stained by the water. 
This nest has 14 eggs, uh, probably dumped here by multiple females. It's probably an abandoned nest as well. Some birds are very, very defensive of their nests. The male and female take turns incubating the eggs, which take about 23 days to hatch. Here's an egg that is hatching. After hatching, the chick jumps up on the parent. There's actually one little chick down underneath the feathers in the back of this guy. Little tiny chick with his head sticking out of the feathers in the back of that western grebe. The number of nests vary from year to year. We think the food supply has something to do with it. The, the birds feed on fish. Uh, mostly small fish, uh, including some species that have been introduced here. And when there are a few fish available, the colonies are often abandoned by the birds. Uh, there's a number of threats for these colonies. Uh, sometimes motorboats come through the colonies very fast and they can uh, drive right over nests and destroy eggs. Uh, the large wakes generated from boats can capsize nests. The goals of this project are to educate the public who use the lake for recreational purposes, whether they're boaters or jet skiers or water skiers, to get them to understand that their boat wakes can be dangerous to these birds during the time they're sitting on their nests on the water. This is a public education campaign by the Redwood Audubon Society for the Grebes at a political rally here in Lakeport. I won't say which political party. And we're out here on uh, Clear Lake at a site where we've set out some protective uh, buoys, some five mile an hour warning buoys, to warn boaters not to go fast in these areas where there are nesting grebes. We've placed four five mile an hour warning buoys across this area to protect the, uh, the nesting grebes in this area. There are about 40 grebes in this area. Uh, we have a, an agreement with the Audubon Society to do this, and uh, this is a, a very good program to help promote the nesting and uh, reproduction of the grebes here on Clear Lake. Uh, we think that uh, boaters and grebes can certainly coexist here on the lake, but uh, we just have to make sure that they know that there are areas where they have, they have to go slow so they don't disturb the nesting birds. This is a colony of about 1,100 nests, and there are four different buoys here that are set up along the uh, this particular edge of the colony in order to warn boaters to slow down and stay away. Here's a sign telling us to slow down. The fishermen and the grebes basically coexist out here in the lake. This is what we like to see, boats going slowly through a colony. These are waves from a boat that are tossing this nest up and down. Uh, nests are well designed, however, to handle such small waves. Uh, large waves can be more problematic, and windstorms, natural windstorms, can generate some large waves. We have really big swells here, where there are nests of grebes way out here in the water, a long ways from shore. Strong winds can blow a nest free. This nest here we watch float underneath that bridge and it is actually being blown upstream of a tributary. Last year, we had 200 nests be destroyed by strong winds in one colony. There are river otters that get in here and, uh, and eat the eggs. Raccoons probably get in as well, and uh, we've, we've watched uh, uh, an entire colony basically be decimated by American crows. Here are some crows feeding on the eggs at a nest. <laughs> Here is a California gull feeding on the eggs of a nest. Right here is a chick that did not hatch successfully for some reason. Here's a little chick that died for some unknown reason shortly after hatching. Here is a dead grebe, probably eaten by an owl. I suspect it was ambushed on its nest at nighttime. 
Introduced species of plants and animals are a potential threat to the aquatic ecosystems here at Clear Lake. The state and county governments are spending millions of dollars to keep hydrilla and other invasive weeds out of Clear Lake. So here are some guys that are contracted to spray for submerged macrophytic plants here in Clear Lake. The airboats are used to spray weeds and they generate a lot of noise. And we encourage the operators to avoid the grebe colonies. In this case, they have to go sort of right through them, but they're going very slow, which is what they're, exactly what they're supposed to be doing. This is one of about 18 nests in a small colony in Rodman Slough. Uh, if you, as you notice, the water primrose plants are all brown. They've been sprayed with a herbicide to kill them. This is an exotic species of plant that doesn't belong here. And uh, uh, spraying these weeds probably is not very good for the grebes. The quagga and the zebra mussel are exotic species of uh, mollusks. And at the moment, they do not exist here in Clear Lake. They've wreaked havoc on freshwater lakes uh, across North America. And the state and county governments are spending millions of dollars trying to keep them out of here. And the problem is if they get in here, there's nothing that eats them. The populations explode dramatically. And uh, they are filter feeders that will filter out all the phytoplankton, uh, at least a lot of it in the lake, and it removes the food for fish and fish-eating birds. So it would uh, dramatically alter the um, ecology of Clear Lake. This is Sulphur Bank Mine located at the southeast end of the lake. It was an active mercury mine in the late 1880s and for several decades. A lot of mercury leached into the lake. Uh, this particular pit here has, is highly acidic with a pH of something like 2.6. And the mercury has biomagnified into the fish and the fish eating birds, including grebes. This is considered a super fun site that the federal government has spent millions of dollars trying to remediate. I'm standing here on the deck of a private homeowner here on Clear Lake. And this uh, is part of the most exciting step that we've had in this project to try and educate the public about grebes. We have just set up a web camera on a group of nesting grebes. The webcam is focused on a nest and I could watch the activities at the nest from my office. It's a wonderful opportunity. People love watching these birds. They are among the most beautiful and most fascinating that you could ask to work with.